Okay, everybody, we're going to get into our next presenter, who is Misha Johnston. Let me bring her on here. And we've done a couple of events with Misha. She did one on MK Ultra My Labs and um, is now a speaker going around the circuit. She's actually going to be presenting at our conference in 2020, October 2nd to 4th, 2020. She'll be presenting there. And a little bit about her. She is a second generation ET experiencer, My Lab, and MK Ultra survivor. In addition, she is a certified hypnotherapist, specializes in trauma recovery, ADD, ADHD hypnosis, and past life regression. She facilitates virtual support groups for ET experiences, MyLab, and MK Ultra survivors on the virtual internet through Zoom, uh, like we're doing right now. She is the director of UFO Group in Las Vegas and facilitates two monthly support groups in her residence. So let's bring her on. Misha, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, Misha, welcome. Hi. Hey. Uh, nice to see you, Neil. Thank you for having me. For sure. So we're um, excited. Go ahead and tell us, you know, about your experiences, but also funnel it into the work that you're doing now. We'll be glad, great to hear that as well. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. So I, I, I want to want to go over. So I'm just checking my time here. All righty. So um, first of all, my experiences started way back uh, as as a child. I was uh, three years old and um, had what. Um, I always like to show visual. Is it okay if I show visual? Can I show pictures? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Go okay, ahead. okay, perfect. All right, so, yes. All right, so there were all different types of uh, being that I've had encounters with. Um, and uh, we, don't, we don't see the visuals right now if you- No, I'm, I'm getting it ready. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so now I, I, ha I had to get it up before I can. Okay. Good second here. All right, so um, I, I'm not going to really do a presentation. I'm just going to point out a few of the types of beings I had. My first actual encounter, though, was at three years old with uh, these little fellows. They're little fuzzy fellows. I lived in Idaho. So I really, in my mind, uh, as seeing these little invisible friends that nobody else could see but me, I thought that they were uh, baby Bigfoots um, because I lived in Idaho and I called them Bee Gees the Bears. And a very interesting thing that uh, soon, um, when I got older, I, I went to, actually I went to Star Wars movie and then I saw the Ewoks and I went, oh my goodness, that's them. And, and since then, I have talked to many people who had encounters with these little fuzzy guys. So uh, that is the first kind. And then this picture off to the right was given to me by a whistleblower who said that, indeed, the government had interactions with these little BG guys, with these little um, Iwaki, whatever you want to call them. I call them Bee Gees. But so they had their own um, uh, um, contact with and so um, not to really go into too much more as far as the MK Ultra, but I was born into an MK Ultra family. And uh, um, that uh, changed my life tremendously. All, of, all the time, though, I was continuing to have contact with the little Bee Gees and with the Willowy Ones. So the Willowy Ones came into my life uh, right about six years old. And at that same time, about three years old is when I started in what was to be the trauma-based mind control and um, programming, uh, which was actually done by my father, who was also in the, in the mind control and the trauma-based mind control as well, and had had it happening to him since he was a child. But... Uh, at, at six, as I said, I, I met this fellow, and I saw these types that were very, very positive. I never had any negative experiences. When I was six years old, I would know that they were there because they'd come to my window, and I said, my, deer, my deers are here. To me, they look like three deers. So I, this is something that is a very thing for people and especially children to see animals, uh, deers and, and the like, um, or owls or 
uh, cats, in the, all kinds of different beings that actually they are a screening image from um, the ETs. And so I had this encounter with him uh, um, with many, many times. When the deers would come, I knew it was time to go. And I had encounters with him all the way up into my adult life. Um, and I call him a him because I really don't know what else to call him. But I called him the willowy one because when he walked, he was, he had no bones. And he glided above the, about, above the floor. And um, so he just kind of walked like a willow. And I call him the willowy one. And then, of course, uh, my experiences continued and into my child, uh, out of my childhood into my teen life. Um, then into my um, adult life, and I had children. They too had experience, and one particular time during an experience, the my son had a very tall ET, which could have been this one because uh, this one I know was like five and a half, six feet tall, but it came up to his bunk bed actually, and it said, and it, it, he awoke. And it told him, do not be alarmed telepathically, of course. Do not be alarmed. Uh, this is necessary. Uh, um, you are, we're not here to harm you. And basically, that's the kind of terminology. We're not here for you. And then he looked out in the hallway and saw one shorter gray type of ET and me and another shorter gray type of ET and me in the middle being levitated out uh, down the hall. And that particular time, I remember being levitated through the window. And um, when I was going through the window, I was really alarmed and, and thought, well, how can I be going through a window? They told me that you went through a time when there was no window there. So that indeed is the time travel that uh, I have found out in, in my life and uh, other people experience as well. So then I had um, other encounters with um, a group that came in in about 1980, and they were more of a um, service to self, let's say. And they would, uh, the greys would pick me up and take me in an underground base, uh, or I would be taken by these reptilian types here to an underground base. And um, I had a lot of, um, of these abductions that came after my experiences with other ETs, I would get these abductions from these um, reptilians or these other types of gray. And they take me underground base and many things happen, including um, a particular time with this guy right here. I was walking in a underground, it was definitely a dumb, uh, because one side of the wall was a shiny wall. The other side was like a regular wall. But that was like a shiny rock wall. And then it was a wall. It was very dull and gray colors, but very dull, drab grays. And um, uh, not grays, but dab, drab colors. And I was walking what I knew was next to something. And I was in this uh, semi, what we'd call a scopolamine or catamine state, where you're in a, a, a very um, hypnotized state. You can't really look around. You can only look with your eyes. Well, as I was walking down this uh, walk, uh, this um, um, hall with him, there was other people passing me. Some, some in uniform, some carrying guns, some in lab coats, and they were all humans, of course. And they were passing me, and they'd look at me, but they would never look at him. And I thought, well, this is not right because I know there's a reptilian next to me, walking next to me. I know it. And he telepathically told me um, with vision and words that they know better. They know they must honor us. And basically what he was showing me was other people, or soldiers actually, had looked at um, him or other reptilians that looked like him. And they had been, one had went crazy it looked like. And another one had been drug off because he broke the rules. So they were definitely in charge on that level that I was on. So this kept going on for a long time. And it was very, very horrific. It was horrible. And I felt like my children were being taken. And my, in fact, my 
oldest son definitely had been in an underground base where I had seen him coming out of an elevator, same elevator I was in, but he was, when they ushered us all out of this elevator, they took part of the group to where these tall grays were, which more beige-like gray were standing, and I was being taken off towards where the military was, and um, I, I, I saw my son there being taken there. So, and then I talked to him and found out indeed, and that was when he was like 13 years old, but he, he, they were two, all, uh, my other son also were having my lab experiences. So the reason now I know that I was taken as a my lab as it was an interfacer, because throughout my life as a child, I had these um, class room experiences on board the ship where I would see languages, I would hear languages uh, on this huge screen and then also this holographic screen right in front of me. And I was learning the language and I, I, I knew that, or I, do, I know that now, I didn't know that at the time what it was all about, but I was learning the language to be a translator. So um, I actually, this galactic light language I've been speaking my whole life and uh, um, some people call it the, the, uh, the light language or angelic language or whatever, but it is galactic language. I speak probably about 15 to 20 or more different uh, languages. And I uh, also translations come through as well. And I know that's what they were used for me for down in the, in the underground bases because there were times when they would bring like the reptilian in to uh, interact, uh, inter interface with me. And he would look in my eyes and uh, we would communicate and I would uh, give him information. And then of course, same thing with them. I was to tell the, and this usually always was a lieutenant colonel. For me, that's what I always saw, lieutenant colonel. And then I would see uh, other military people in the background. But um, so um, they'd interface um, with me, give information, and then I would translate it off, off to the lieutenant colonel. So this happened a lot. So I know that is the particular reason that they wanted me. Um, and then I asked my galactic uh, family, please help me stop this horrific things because these my lab experiences was not just about interrogation, but there was there was torture that went on and there was sexual torture. There were there was like rape. There was horrific things because, in my opinion, it's kind of like a two level thing. The first level is they um, abduct experiencers after their abduct, after their contact after their experience is over and they want to know different things about the aliens and so they want to know the propulsion systems they want to know how the ships are flown they want to know if we've flown a ship they want to know um if um, um you know if we can communicate with the ats they want to know uh, what they're they're telling us so in actuality some of the, the the hypnosis and torture and the different things that they put us through put us into a state where we end up being spies. And in fact, I do remember an implant being put in my eye that I truly believe was put in by the ETs that were in the underground bases that were uh, co-existing uh, and working with the factions of the shadow government and uh, the CIA and such as that. So, so there is a first group, they're very interested in what's going on, all right? All right, they want to know all the things. Then when they can't get enough information from you or they cannot sway you, whatever, then you will go into another group, which I believe is probably a lower level of, of them. That's where the other ETs come into it. That's when the experiences with the uh, like kind of mind melts that I've had uh, with this one and with this one as well. This was during a break-in and then I was taken with Melinda Leslie and we were taken to have communications with that one. So these experiences were uh, continuing on and I, like I said, I believe it's like that two-level kind of thing. Some maybe not, uh, don't even know what the other ones are doing. I think it's so compartmentalized. All right, so I asked my, as I said, I asked my galactic family for help and assistance 
And then they sent me these beans. They sent me all three of these beans to assist and help me. This one was protecting my children. This one came into my life as this uh, beautiful, loving being uh, who I later found out actually was when I could handle seeing that from a different from a screen image. And then it actually became this one who was uh, I introduced. I, after many, many experiences, I found out his name was Ayano, and we had a long, long time uh, friendship and um, um, let's say collaboration uh, with not only onboard ships, but actually underground bases. And that was one of the reasons I was interrogated was because they knew that I had interactions with this group of reptilians who are a very positive group from, um, I believe, Sirius. Um, and they wanted to know uh, where the base was. Okay, so anyway, so my, my experiences continue on. And uh, then I had the protection from them. Uh, so I had another type of ET experience that went on. And then um, that pretty much is the end of, I think, the pictures. Of course, I had a lot of uh, MK Ultra things going on as well. And um, I've written uh, some autobiography about two, two, two volumes of it, Covert Abduction, um, the, the Military Harassment, Surveillance, Interrogation, and Mind Control of the uh, in, involving the ET experience and then the indeed my lab experience afterwards. I then uh, also I wrote uh, this book about my monarch experiences, which I didn't really want to get into too much today because I wanted to be sure and be able to explain to you uh, what this whole thing has come to pass and how things have worked. So I will tell you that, whoops, no, not that one. <laughs> so basically that's the end of uh, the, the pictures, okay? So, um, I was told in uh, 1989 I, I, is when I basically woke up. And then actually in 1990, I joined the UFO Contact Center International. And soon after I joined it here in Las Vegas, um, the uh, coordinator had to leave. So she asked me to take over. So I did take over. And we brought, I brought in speakers and such as that for people to, 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 to come to the lectures. And, and then... Um, Sometimes, from time to time, we wouldn't have a speaker, so then we'd have people just share. And one particular time, well, uh, the very first time uh, that I was spoken to by my ETs to do something about this was um, a, uh, a guy was standing up and talking about his experience. And my ET said to me, telepathic, it's now time, it, it, it is a good time to start uh, an experience group. And I said, oh, no, I, I, I can't do that. I'm doing this. I, I can't do that. I, I work. I, I'm in corporate America. I don't have that kind of time. So then another month went by, another group. They asked me the same thing. Another month went by, another group. Uh, actually, a couple of months went by. And this gal uh, got up and she was telling about how horrific thing, experiences were. She had no one to talk to. And very, in a very more firm voice, they said, it is now time to start that experiencer group. And so I started that group from that point on, and that was in 1991. And in late 1991, uh, being that I had teen group, teen children, teenagers, I started a teen group uh, for uh, kids. My kids knew kids, uh, people in my group uh, knew other, they had children or they knew children. And so I had teen group. And then in, uh, um, it was real close to 1992, I started the children's group, which was uh, a group that was designed specifically for families to come with their children who were having experience. And children would draw pictures and different kinds of methods and methodology that I used to help them get in touch with what was going on with them. I will tell you that I do have um, questionnaires for all of these different kinds of groups that I've done throughout the years and are still doing that uh, you can access on my website, uh, which is uh, starseedawakening.org. I also, of course, um, have experience groups uh, through um, Zoom, 
which is on the internet. It's just like Skype. Well, of course, we're on Zoom. Of course, you know that. All right. So Zoom, uh, I have these groups and I have been said for seven years now. I had these groups. One gr uh, group was for ET contact, people who are having experience of maybe just a little bit or they're waking up to their contacts. So it's a good group for people who are just waking up to their experience. And the other is uh, a group for people who have had ET contact, my lab contact, MK Ultra, uh, DID, uh, secret space program, super soldier, all of those. So I have two of those groups that kind of blend back and forth between uh, the my lab experiences and the MK Ultra group. So those are uh, a group I have. So every Thursday uh, from four to six or four to seven, it usually goes that late. I have the experiencer, the starseed group, the experiencer starseed group. And then on every Wednesday, I have the uh, my lab group. And on every Sunday, we have the my lab and Ultra group. Uh, but in any of those other two groups, you can you can come if you are any of those things, super soldier, secret space program. I also, of course, have a galactic light language class that I teach as well. Um, and I do those through the internet. Um, let me see, I don't have my other book. Okay, and I'm going to just show you another book. But, I, um, but the Galactic Light Language class is a class uh, for people who are just waking up to their experiences of, of a galactic language. So maybe they've been talking it when they wake up in the, in the middle of the night, or uh, maybe they have um, had, um, as a child, they've spoke it. And in some cases, it's even been a family member, or like a husband or a spouse, husband or wife, whichever, have um, heard them speaking it in the middle of the night. And so these people uh, come to me, and I teach them the 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 light, uh, the galactic language, as well as how to translate the language. And in fact, we feel that we like in the war, like in the war uh, when the Na Native Americans did the private codes, the secret codes through the war to send messages so that the, uh, I think it was the Nazis or the Chinese or the Japanese wouldn't, wouldn't uh, understand it. Well, we too are getting these secret codes, these galactic languages. Sometimes they're meant just for us, or just sometimes they're meant for other people. And sometimes they're not supposed to be uh, translated. So sometimes the translations will come through, but sometimes they won't. And, and, and we also feel that when the time of great change, in fact, I was told by the consortium that does channel through me, that when the time of great change comes, that they will be, um, um, we will be the translators when the time of great change comes. So I would like to uh, just show you briefly a few of the galactic beings that are um, in in there. So let me just say here. So this is this is my book. Let me get the share over here. One second. Oops, I lost you. Where are you? Okay, share. Okay. So this is Galactic Genealogy Planetary Origins. My, my Galactics came to me when one of the many sessions that they had with me while they were helping me understand the galactic language. They said, everyone wants to know what their genealogy is on your planet. It is so much, very, so much more important to find out what your genealogy is out on, um, on Earth, uh, on the off Earth, off planet Earth in the galactic. So they said they wanted me to put together a, uh, a book and uh, uh, actually a chart, which I'd already had put together, to of all the different planetary groups. So this is companion book to a star city galactic genealogy chart. Um, so these are uh, a lot of the different types of beings that I'm just gonna just just span through a little level for you, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, because I don't want to take up too much time. 
So there's all different types of beings, all different types of beings. Um, that's just a few of them. There's many, 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 many more. Um, there's blue types. There's uh, types that have come from our our history, the Anunnaki. There's all kinds of there. In fact, our government it says there's 62 different types that are interacting with Earth. So um, within these planetary groups, you see that there are many, many, many different groups of different types of ETs. So they all speak. A different language um, and they can communicate language back and forth with each other so there's all different groups as well along with my experiences I also was in the hybrid program and have had uh, many um, hybrid children presentations of hybrid children and hybrid babies uh, presented to me um, Sharian this is where um, Ayano came from, and any different types of beings, the Venetians, the Vedas, and even the hybrids, many, many different types of hybrid groups. This is a, one of my hybrids. I have many other hy hybrids. I was presented with uh, like uh, 17 I, that I know I have. So they felt it is extremely important for us to realize that we are connected and that we are part of the, um, the galactic community, even though we have forgotten that we are, that we're part of, um, of the, uh, the group out there. And so um, should you be interested in uh, any of the groups that I have, you can go to starseedawakening.org. That's my website. You can also go on Facebook to Starseed Awakening ET Experiencer Group or Starseed Awakening ET Contact Experiencer Group. Uh, those are uh, private gr groups. They're not, yeah, they're private groups, but you can come and join those. Uh, there's just a few little questionnaire that we ask you to answer. And it's a place for you to come and share and talk to other people. Of course, on Zoom, I have the, the groups uh, that you can go to, and you'll see those in the events, and you'll see those uh, uh, advertised throughout the the groups. I also, if you are an MK Ultra, I also have the MK Ultra DID My Lab group that you can find that on Facebook as well. Uh, you can also find the Galactic uh, Light Language classes there. I also do produce. I have. I don't produce. I have a radio show. Uh, at KCOR Radio with my co-host Tana Newberry, and we bring in guests all about this. And a lot of experiencers come on my show because I think it's very important for you to come and share your experience. It's very important for you to be in a group and share your experience, um, listen to other people's experience. It helps you understand what you're going through, and uh, it's very important to join a group if you can. That is so important. I'm part of free. I'm part of the uh, the, the therapist, uh, the hypnotherapists that are on free as well, and um, I have uh, assisted a little bit in the um, some some uh, things that they do there. They've asked me for a, few, uh, a little bit consulting work and such as that. And you can find me at KCOR Radio on Saturdays. Um, I'd love to have you come and join the groups on Facebook. Uh, you can go to starseedawakening.org and, and find all of the information. I am going to be speaking um, at a conference, um, a couple of conferences. Uh, I'm going to be speaking this one next year uh, as a conference in California. I am also going to be at a UFO cruise um, in October 6th through the 13th. And going to be sharing a whole lot about the information um, with uh, oh okay I see hands up do you want to speak so um, yeah so if anybody has a question for me you can find all the information you need on starseedawakening.org and please do join the uh, the groups uh, not if you don't join mine join some other ones. Awesome, Misha. 
Thank you so much, Misha. I truly appreciate everything that you're doing, and I'm excited to have you next year at our conference. Okay, thank you, and take care. Bye-bye. Talk later. Bye.